So in my global report segments, I oftentimes talk about mostly international affairs, but on occasion I talk about domestic affairs, particularly when they will involve my state, Massachusetts. Now, this man was the worst governor in the history of Massachusetts. You want to know why? Well, continue watching and enjoy the program. Welcome to the Global Report with Zach the Celtics Guy. This is the Massachusetts edition. I don't know. Every single time I, I make the Global Report with Zach and I talk about whatever stuff's going on with Massachusetts, I'll just say, hey, this is the Massachusetts edition. Or say if I talk about New Hampshire, uh, it'll be the New Hampshire edition. Okay. All right, whatever. Anyway, welcome to the Global Report, Massachusetts edition. Uh, no. edition. I am your host, Zach the Celtics Guy, as you all know me. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the internal affairs going on in my state. So what what um who was the who would you say would be the least your least favorite elected official in your state? I've gotten this question a bunch of times and I feel like I can finally give a little bit of an answer sort of but I would obviously have to say that the the my least favorite elected official in Massachusetts, Deval Patrick. This man was the worst governor in the history of Massachusetts. Why do I say that? I, it's like how do how do you know that? Like how was he the worst? I'll tell you why. He was one of the main drivers of why. We have some particularly high tax rates, and 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 I'm, and I'm not even talking about good taxes. I'm not even talking about certain things, because this was a very similar situation that happened in Maryland. Remember how Maryland went from having Martin O'Malley in Maryland that had 43 consecutive tax hikes on Maryland that nearly crushed their economy. They they nearly went into a recession because. Business w was driven out of Maryland. They were going to other states. It, it, things were just terrible. Then a moderate Republican stepped in, Larry Hogan, who I am a massive fan of. Great guy, was a great governor. He did a lot of good for Maryland. I've been a fan of his for a long time. Pretty good guy. I really like him. Um, he obviously wiped the floor in the 2018 debate with Ben Jealous. I mean, Ben Jealous, just, he was just talking in circles. He put his foot in his mouth at every given opportunity. We had a very similar, we also, in Massachusetts, it was a very similar situation. Deval Patrick raised the sales tax from 5% to 6.25%. This was a man that also got the ball rolling on the gas tax increase in 2013, but Massachusetts voters actually voted to repeal that in 2014. That was the reason why, and, and more than half of them voted against it. I was actually one of the ones that voted against it. 2014 was the year that I voted for Charlie Baker in Massachusetts. We had a very similar situation. So the gas tax increase that we repealed, that would that, that would be in line with inflation, Massachusetts voters were voted to repeal that by a majority to stop De Deval Patrick from getting his way and driving up the gas tax increase from being just insane. That was the reason why, you know, before Biden came in and he drove up our fucking gas prices. And that's the reason why we've got gas prices that are no less than three fucking dollars. You'd be lucky to find anything that is 310, 320 a, a gallon at this point. That was the reason why Massachusetts, a, bl a solid blue state, had one of the cheapest gas prices in New England, along with Rhode Island. Rhode Island and Massachusetts were the two solid blue states that had the cheapest gas prices with an average of like 270 or 280 a gallon. I remember those days. I've been driving since 2016. I've had my driver's license, but guess what? I remember those days when the gas prices were at 280, 290 a gallon. Could you imagine if voters did not vote to repeal that? Do you know how bad gas prices would have been would would have been? would have been then but imagine how they'd be now they probably they it would it would be like california it would literally be like california we were we were this close to becoming the california of new england the only reason that we didn't and massachusetts became more moderate over time was mainly because of was because of charlie baker so no deval patrick was was the was the was a was a 
bad governor for this state. And you know me, guys. I'm a leftist. I believe in taxing the wealthy. I believe in universal health care, universal education. But, but when it comes to my tax record, I'm very mixed. Like, I don't even really agree with the sales tax. I really, I think you can, I think you can, um, you can fund revenue. You can do better things with your, with your goods and stuff without a sales tax. I mean, hey, New Ham I mean, hey, my friends in New Hampshire, I mean, <laughs> hey, y'all, you guys up there, you I mean, you do it. Sales, no sales tax, no income tax, whatever. Income tax, I'm mixed on. I think it should be, it, it should be extraordinarily low for people who for people who make less than a hundred thousand a year it should only be like one percent maybe and then the rat and then the rat and then everybody above a hundred thousand dollars it should it should rise depending well obviously we voted for the millionaire's tax but that's you know we voted for the millionaire's tax so it just depends on the tax bracket it won't depending on the bracket you fall under and how much your income makes so no my record on taxes is my record on taxes and what I feel, well, my record, my views are very mixed. But in terms of taxation, it was it, it was bad. I mean, it was just it was just bad. Like Deval Patrick literally almost turned Massachusetts into the California of New England. This was the, the he was the reason why we even got the name Taxachusetts in the first place. <laughs> it was actually the reason. So. So like Maryland, we had a moderate Republican, Charlie Baker, that came in and cleaned house. This man invested more in the economy and, and invested more into housing. He signed one of the largest housing packages ever in the state's history. He... He, he, he turned our economy around. Our economy went from being nearly crushed by all these ridiculous tax increases. And the, the gas tax increase, which by the way, our current governor, Maura Haley, who was a Democrat, who I'm still rooting for, and I still think she's not too bad, but you know, we'll see what happens on that. I think she's, I think she means, well, she's, I give her the benefit of the doubt, but what, it, um, what the fuck was I saying? Oh yeah, so, she said it was a it was a gimmick for the oil companies, and that and that's true. That's what it was. That there were a lot of taxes. You see, if see if you have too much taxation like California, that's just going to be used for big corporations, and it's just going to end up a trickle down economics, and that's not going to help the people, because you you need to have smart taxation. Taxation has to be smart. Taxation has to be. No, you can't have too low of taxes because remember, you all have to have, you got to have your revenue come from somewhere. So I think a perfect world is to have lower taxes on people who are low income or middle class and higher taxes on people that make like a hundred grand or more. And obviously much higher taxes on the wealthy. I a hundred percent support that. That's why I voted for the millionaire's tax. So but 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 that's not raising taxes on the on working class people. Here's the difference. Deval Patrick raised taxes on on those people. He raised taxes on the 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 low the middle income. I mean, he was just terrible. His economic record was terrible. And if it wasn't for Charlie Baker, I don't know where the fuck the state would have had it. I don't even know. I can't even fathom it. If it wasn't for the repealing of the gas tax, because it was actually funny because that was one of the main reasons that Charlie Baker won because of the gas tax increase and, and how it almost, it almost, it, it, it seriously, it almost caused a gas shortage. It almost caused a recession. It almost caused it. It's the same thing. It, 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 the taxes on the average person, on the average middle income person went up like what, eight, 9%. And in Maryland, under under um, Martin O'Malley, they went up twelve percent. It would get the average person. It was uh, taxing them on an average forty eight hundred dollars. You know how insane that is. That's ridiculous. That's very similar to what happened here. So Maryland and Massachusetts had a very similar situation where we had where we you know were the, were one of the bluest states in the country. Maryland is solid blue. Massachusetts is solid blue. I would argue. 
that that they're solid blue, but they're better than other blue states. Absolutely, they are way better than California, way better than New England, uh, not New England, way better than New York. Rather, they are way better than New York. They are way better than than, than them. I mean, New England is just better than other parts of the country in general. It's better than other, you know, backward states like, you know, like Mississippi and Louisiana and Oklahoma where you can't even get a fucking abortion if a woman needs it. So, you know, I mean, those places are still living in the dark ages and California and New York are so fucking extreme on the, in their own way that they're just, they're just shit. And you know what? Massachusetts almost was in that same thing. We literally almost became like another California or another New York. So what did Charlie Baker do? Charlie Baker came in and dethroned the worst governor in the history of this state because he decided he wasn't going to run again. And that was going to be the end of the conversation. Thank God. Thank God this motherfucker got out of there because, again, like I said, I don't know. The state that I have, I have been in, and I have was, I've been born and raised. I'm as Massachusetts as Massachusetts gets. I was born in fucking Malden. I was raised in Revere, Revere, Mass. I was raised in Revere, a suburb of Boston. I was I lived in Salem for eight years, and I've been raised all across the North Shore for eight for all my life. So to see my to see the state that I love and I grew up in, to see to see my beautiful state get get almost fucking California fornated by by this guy no we needed something different and when I turned 18 you know I was still in my I was in my left wing phase I've been left wing my whole life but when I heard what my family was saying and everything and like oh my god this guy named Charlie Baker imagine having a Republican for the first time in our in our history and I was like oh that's so cool so I ended up voting for him and you know what this is the reason why Char and this is the reason here's the reason why why Charlie Baker was the best governor in this state. You want to know why? Because not only was he amazing for the economy, he turned the economy around from what Deval Patrick had, which literally his 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 uh, gas tax increase that thankfully voters in the state repealed um, almost a decade ago, and his is you know his increase in the sales tax and taxes on the average person went up thousands of dollars it almost crushed our economy and charlie baker turned it around but he turned it around so much our economy was booming our schools got it just became like so much better you know just just everything like literally baker just caused this state to just become so much more moderate and and massachusetts modernized under under baker because Baker caused our state to be more moderate. He moderated our state. I guess I said modernized. He moderated our state so much. And and for that, I think I think he was great. And you know what? I love that when I had when we had other governors like Chris Sununu in New Hampshire. Chris Sununu in New Hampshire is similar to Baker on a lot of different things. I think see, Chris Sununu was more friendly with Trump, but obviously him he 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 no longer respects Trump. But that's besides the point. See, Chris Sununu was an ally of Baker. So I love the idea that my governor that finally turned my state around and we had one of the best economic turnarounds in America. I loved having a governor that was actually respected by other officials in the country. And Baker also knocked it out of the park during the 2018 debates. Up against this guy, which would have been a re, which would, which would have been another recreation of the same thing that we voted against in 2014, voted to repeal the state's gas tax increase, which not only only helped the big oil companies, but it also nearly crushed our economy and almost caused a gas shortage. Governor Baker, the idea of building a seawall around Boston, do you support that? I actually read the study that was done by the UMass Boston folks on this issue. It was pretty comprehensive and pretty effective. Um, and yes it or makes, no? Let me just finish. It makes a heck, you said you would give us a little room. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh man, he 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 fucking he he. I mean, Baker knocked it out of the park. I mean, Baker just came onto this whole debate stage. He was like, Baker was a fucking rock star during this debate. I, I was so happy to vote for him again. I voted for him. My first, my the first man I voted for was Charlie Baker when I was eighteen. 
I voted in 2014, my first ever vote, my first ever ballot when I turned 18. I turned 18 in August. August my birthday is August 24th, 1996. So August 24th, 2014, my first vote for any elected official was Charlie Baker in Massachusetts. I voted for him. And I voted for some of the other things. I mean, obviously, I voted against, you know, the, um, I voted for, against the, um, I voted against the, the gas tax increase. I voted to repeal it. I think my, I think my whole family voted for it. Even I voted against, voted, I voted for the repeal. I voted for it. I think my dad did, because my dad's been mostly Republican throughout the years. Even other people in my family are mostly independent, but I think, but I think even they did too. So, so no. Just the fact that Baker had so much respect from other governors, he worked with other governors too, Larry Hogan, he's worked with governors all over the country. He also called out Trump for being a piece of shit, which I also massively respected. And you want to know the other thing too? Baker also did not endorse Joe Biden. He did not endorse either Trump or Joe Biden. Just think of that. He didn't endorse either one of them because you know what? I, as a leftist, obviously someone who is... I am to the left of all of these people. I am to the left of all of the, the, the corporate elite and everything. I am to the left of the Democrats. I am to the left of the modern day left. I'm the, I'm the I ride the Jimmy Dore train all day, motherfucker. But, <laughs> but, but no, this, this whole thing right here. Um, no, I mean, like I said, he was just, he was. I, I love the fact that he was able to work with other governors. And like I said, and this was the Maryland de and this was the Maryland debate here where, where Hogan was talking, where Larry Hogan, the great Larry Hogan was talking about the same thing. Well, yeah. first of all, I want to thank the sponsors of tonight's uh, event. And I want to uh, especially thank all of you for watching at home. Four years ago, uh, Maryland was way off track and heading in the wrong direction. We had lost 8,000 businesses and 100,000 jobs after 43 consecutive tax hikes had crushed our economy. I decided to step up and try to do something about that. I promised to put Maryland on a new path, and we have done exactly what we said we would do. We've cut taxes, tolls, and fees four years in a row by $1.2 billion. And we put all that money back into the pockets of hardworking Marylanders, retirees, and small businesses, and back into our growing economy. Mm -hmm. We now have more businesses open and more people working in our state than ever before in the history of the state. Brilliant. I mean, fucking brilliant. Obviously me, I'm an independent guy. I'm a left-wing independent. I do not, I do not support the two-party system. The only people that you ever would convince me to vote for anybody, okay, in order to get my vote, you need you need either someone like a leftist vote, and I, obviously when I say leftist, I do not mean Democrats, because Democrats are not left-wing, let's get that straight. Democrats in this country are fucking right-wing corporatists, and the other Republicans, otherwise, are so fucking far-right, you know, the fucking MAGA side is so fucking far-right, it's just grotesque and disgusting. Do not support those motherfuckers. You know, fucking Trump, Ron DeSantis, fucking Kim, Kim Reynolds, and all the all the other fuckers. You know, Carrie Lake. Or you go down the list. You go down the list. Greg Abbott. You know, the neocons, the neocons, the neo fascists. You need in order to to, to defeat the two party system to defeat something like that. You need either a leftist candidate, like a Green Party candidate, or you need an innovator who is a moderate, business-friendly Republican like Larry Hogan or Charlie Baker or Chris Sununu, who's capable of stealing the left-wing voting block, like me, for example. That's the type of thing that you need. So now let's dive more into the details. Yes, this is the example right here. This is the example right here about Duval Patrick. And so, and I'm not saying that everything he did was bad. I mean, he, he passed the 2016 health care reform, which was Romney care. I mean, well, that, obviously that was Obamacare. That was a fucking Republican health care plan. But, but I'm not going to sit here and lie. 
our, our, our state's healthcare system is one of the best in the country. It's one of the most advanced in the country. Okay. I mean, it, it really is. So that was one of them. Um, obviously one of the stupid things he did raise the state uh, sales tax from 5% to 6.25%. Okay. The other good thing he did raise the state's minimum wage from $8 to $11. Well, no, $11. Again, that's not enough. How do you expect to raise the minimum wage to $11 an hour and then and then raise taxes on the average person by like eight, nine percent? Like, like, obviously, you know, you, again, that's not good economics. If you're going to raise if you're going to raise any kind of taxes, then you need to raise wages as well. So no. So no. For that reason, Deval Patrick did not know what he was doing. He almost turned he almost turned Massachusetts into the California of New England. There was one point where we were. If we weren't, we were going to be very soon. If this man was in there for any for any, for any more extended period of time, if he got like another four years, God forbid, then yeah, we probably would have been. We would have been the laughing stock of New England. It would have been a joke. So, and obviously, you know, you know, obviously, there are things that, you know, like, again, the, the, there are things that you can criticize this state for. Now, obviously, I have my critiques, okay? I'm just saying this. The reason why, the reason why Mass is one of the, it, I would say this, the reason it's one of the best states in the country is for this reason. It's got great health care. It's got great education. It's got great, it's got great wages. It's got a great quality of life. It's got a lot of scenic beauty. It's got its own thing. Like, like Western Mass is its own thing. It's very rural, farmland. Central Mass is basically the same thing. A lot of wooded areas. And then you got, you know, like the South Shore, which is a little more on the urban side. You know, there's, you know, Boston is its thing. There's Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. That's like a sea resort. And then you got the North Shore where I am, which is kind of a mix. It's suburban here, or one minute is suburban, the next minute is in the middle of nowhere, you know. So it's like it's a, it's like it's got everything, but obviously it's got its problems too. You know, high cost. It's very it's, it's expensive. Okay, so so if you need, it, it, there's a lot of great things about it. Obviously, it has way more pros than cons. But one of the cons is it's it's definitely very expensive. And you need a high paying job like Steven and I do everything like like every single thing this roof over our head is paid for out of our out of out of our hard work and all that so you need a high paying job okay so obviously there's that and then there's a lot of other issues too like gentrification and you know there, there are blues there <coughs> there are other issues too like there's savvy sabs on revolutionary blackout network who I'm a massive fan of She's talked about that that there are certain issues too, like there are issues with gentrification, and then that's the case in a lot of blue blue cities. Even in Boston, Boston is very gentrificated and it's not good. So we need to do something like that. You know, obviously we have a housing shortage, and that doesn't help. But you know, that doesn't help. And I think taxes need to be cut in some areas. But Maura Hill, he's trying to do that. Charlie Baker was the one that originally passed the tax relief package, but he was the victim of corporate Democrat obstruction. So in all honesty, I felt bad for Baker because Baker was a great guy. He knew how to speak. He knew he was a he was a community based guy like Chris Sununu was. He knew how to run the economy. He knew about working class people, and he knew all about those types of things. So he. He was a working class. He, he knew all about that type of stuff. So he wanted to push tax relief package out the door. Okay, so now Charlie Baker didn't seek a third term. Okay, so that's why then Moore Haley jumped in, and then we all know what happened then. Moore Haley had her, her opponent, Jeff Deal, a complete fucking moron, a Trump act candidate, a neocon, who was all for, you know, cutting taxes for the rich. That was the reason why he was so adamantly against the millionaire's tax and saying it would drive capital out of Massachusetts, blah, blah, fucking blah. It was completely retarded. Maura Haley wiped the floor with him, and that's why she won in a landslide. And I think if some other moderate Republican, Chris Doughty would have been the guy for the job, but, but then again, at least in my opinion, he didn't stand a chance. He was a moderate like Baker was, but he didn't stand a chance because the neocons got in and they 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 were running ads about Jeff Deal about oh he's so great 
he couldn't even win against fucking Elizabeth Warren. That's another con about Massachusetts. Unfortunately, we've got Elizabeth Warren. And I do not like, I do not, tr I don't like Elizabeth Warren. I don't trust her. And I especially do not agree with my governor palling around with her. Okay, but but obviously, like I said, I have my own opinion on Moore Hilly. I like a lot of things about her. She seems like a good person. Kim Driscoll, her lieutenant governor, is a really good, she was really good. At, she was the mayor of Salem for a long time. She really turned Salem around. Salem used to be ridden with crime and gangs. It, it wasn't a good place for a long time. When I grew up, it wasn't, it wasn't that, it wasn't that pretty. Now it's like, it, it, it's like booming. It's so nice. It literally, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's beautiful now. It, it's like, it's such a great place to go. You can, I go there and I feel so much safer. So no, she did, she did a lot of good things. She invested a lot of money in public safety and stuff like that. So no, Kim Driscoll was great. So I think Moore Hilly has a lot of good people on her side, but again, I do have my disagreements with her. But, but again, that's the this is the type of thing that we are in. So, so now, the tax relief package. No, this is the type of thing that we need. I'm hoping that Moore Hilly can get that tax relief package out because I've been getting more money back in taxes. Stephen and I both did federal and state. And I hope that she does more. I hope she pushes for it. You know, like I said, her, her tax, like I said in my video, the, 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 I think it was like a week ago, her tax cuts are working. More Healy's tax cuts are actually working. Revenue has gone down. So that means that, that the state has less excess tax revenue. And that's a good thing. Because if you can get more money out the door back into the pockets of, of the middle class and low income families, and back into our economy, that will actually help give some relief to families that are struggling like they are today. Not just in this state. I'm talking all around the all, all around the country, but I'm talking specifically here. So she can do that. That would be that would be great. She was also she also saved Massachusetts billions of dollars. I don't know she was for the gas tax increase then, but she did speak out about it in the 2020 uh, debates. I remember I remember that part. I remember that part of the debate. I, I, I do remember that part of the debate, though. I, I don't know exactly where it was, but all I know is, is that she spoke out against it. And she kept saying, look, I'm for cutting taxes. And, you know, I'm for, you know, I'm for cutting taxes for low income families. You know, she, she was saying all that type of stuff. So again, this is what it all came down to. So, so again, so link obviously on the screen, this was her, this was the debate and check it out if you'd like to see it. Cause it was a, it was a good debate. Maura Haley wiped the fucking floor with her and it was pretty fantastic. So yeah. So in other words, yes, we had a very bad governor before Charlie Baker. He was the worst governor in recent history, for sure. Destructive, destructive tax policies. Wasn't a good guy. Was bad for the economy, bad for almost everything. Thankfully, we got Baker to turn us around. And because of all the progress that he made, Maura Healy was his attorney general. She was actually a very good attorney general. I will say that. She was a very good attorney general. And... I think that she's going to do the same thing that Baker's going to do. She's going to try to push things out, and let's hope that she continues to do so. I wish her and Kim Driscoll good luck, and I hope that she continues to do to do good work. And I hope I hope that she continues. I you know, but like I said, if she if she royally screws up, then I'm going to turn it off and be like, "Fuck you! I'm changing the channel." <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that probably, but you know, hey. If she fucks up, I'll be on Team Fuck Maura Hill. But if, but if, but if she but if she continues to do a good job, I will I will say. And if she's an innovator and she's different from the other Democrats, then I'll definitely vote for her re-election. So we'll see what happens on that. But yeah, that's a little history about Massachusetts and the recent the other governor that was the worst and all that and how the history in this state with the governors and so forth was very similar to Maryland. Another solid blue state. So I hope you learned something from this. So I was just hoping that you learned something from this. Well, that's about it for now. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this segment. Hope you learned something about it. 
Anyway, stay tuned for my live stream tonight at 7. I would say tomorrow, but it's already tomorrow because it's already after midnight, of course. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this segment. Stay tuned for my live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Look out for it. This is probably going to be the last video of the week because after because the day after tomorrow, because tomorrow, Friday, I go back to work. Unless I have like an emergency video that I want to make about something that's like dire going on. But uh, but probably not. But until then, I'll see you all tomorrow. I will see you all later today at 7 p.m. for my live stream. Look out for it. More stuff on the way. This is Zach, the Selby's guy, saying thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until next time and until my stream tonight at 7 and until the next video. See you all then. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay classy. And as always, keep fighting and keep on rocking. Till next time. Good night. Peace out and so on.